Hi, my name is Jason Anacarico. I've been coming to Game On for a few years now. This is my first deck profile. It's for Matchstick Grim. Uh, for Force of Will. Alright, uh, started off uh, with the one drops. So I got four Elvish Priests. Uh, best turn one for the deck. Uh, if you get it with a couple of Fairy Tales in hand, you should be good. Uh, other one drops are for Cheshire Cat. Uh, draw engine for the deck. Uh, you can search it out by just pitching other fairy tales with Grimm's ability. Uh, just sets you up uh, really nicely uh, and it is a good target for uh, sacrificing for card I'll show up in a little bit. Uh, then for the two drops got four Gretel uh, to ramp you up uh, for your mana. Uh, once you get up to five stones and an Elvish Priest, you're pretty much going to control most of the game uh, with these four Matchstick Girls. Uh, Matchstick Girl lets you search uh, for, from your deck or discard for Magic Matchsticks. And by discarding one matchstick from your hand, you can deal 400 to a J Resonator. Or, yeah, J Rule or Resonator. Um, Magic Matchstick also serves purpose uh, for putting on Resonators uh, to make them not a viable target for Pastor, uh, which is popular in some aggro lists and uh, Cthulhu lists. Uh, also gives swiftness and first strike, which uh, is very powerful on cards like Hamlin's Pied Piper, uh, Adam Brawley, the Unfathomable, uh, and especially uh, Rapunzel, Long-Haired Princess, uh, lets you OTK players from as much as 4,000 life. Uh, then got, to round out the two drops, got two Glinda. Um, helps for uh, canceling out uh, Split Heaven and Earth by aggro players because they usually don't get that many stones out because uh, they use Reflect. Uh, you just tap for one or two, uh, two or three stones and then uh, they just use two drops and Reflect to get in all the damage they need. Uh, and when they're at two stones and try to cast a spell, you just sack Linda and cancels the spell. Very useful. Also makes things unblockable the turn she comes into play. Also useful. Uh, then we got two little prints uh, for against aggro matchups uh, when you're at 1,000 or less health. Uh, it gains you 1,000 life points. Uh, also it gets plus 400 points for each resonator you have in play that has a different total cost than him. So if you have, say, a 1-drop and a 3-drop in play, it comes a 10k beater. And paired with Matchstick, a uh, 10k beater with Swiftness First Strike, very, very powerful. So that's the 2-drops. Then got the 3-drops, best card in the deck possibly, Adam Brawley, the Unfathomable. Uh, Instead of paying the cost, uh, you can incarnate by sacrificing two resonators. And depending on what color they are, uh, you get different abilities. Usually you're going to be sacrificing a Cheshire Cat and a Gretel to draw a card from your deck and then produce one will of any attribute, uh, which helps get out, uh, say, another Gretel or another Cheshire Cat. This gives you a lot of tempo. Uh, you can even produce red and put a matchstick on it for free. Attack for six with first strike. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, also pairs with uh, I the Pilot. Uh, it's a one of in the deck. Uh, what it does is it's awakening. When you put it in play, you can pay two and search out a little prince from your deck. Uh, and whenever Little Prince dies while he's on the board, 
uh, you gain another 1,000 life points. So say you're below 1,000 life points, you do his awakening, search out Little Prince, and then sacrifice Little Prince for Adam Brawley, you'll gain 1,000 life points from Little Prince and I the Pilot to total 2,000. Adam Brawley, when a light resonator is sacrificed for him, you gain 400. So it gives a lot of potential to gain a lot of life and put your opponent in a really bad position. And also, it's just card advantage, getting multiple guys out for one card. Uh, then we got two Rapunzel, one of the win conditions for the deck. Uh, Rapunzel is a three drop, six six. Uh, she doesn't untap at your recovery phase. However, she can tap to give plus two in flying to one of your resonators, and you can tap another resonator to untap her. So you could play her with four, five resonators on board, put a matchstick on her, tap to give herself plus two in flying, and then keep tapping your guys to keep swinging for eight in the air and OTK your opponent from 4,000. Uh, and to get more resonators in play, you add them brawly, sack ones that are already tapped. It's really, really good. Uh, then we got Etna, the Snow Queen. Uh, she taps down things until she uh, leaves the board with her awakening. You can do as many as you like uh, as long as you have the mana. Uh, so if you have six mana, which you often will because of all the ramp in the deck, you can be tapping down three threats and until they get rid of her, those guys are frozen. Uh, also when she attacks and deals damage to the opponent, uh, they have to discard a card, so that's uh, another niche thing that makes her kind of nice to have. So that's three drop resonators. Then uh, no four drop resonators, just got two uh, Hamelin Tide Pipers in the five slot, and two Wyber White Dragon. Hamelin usually is discard fodder. Uh, the only way you're getting them out for the most part is from another spell in the deck, Tell a Fairy Tale. Uh, Gwyber is very realistically going to come out turn two uh, with Elvish Priest into Gretel or Cheshire Cat. Uh, and that is because for each resonator that has come out uh, this turn, he costs two less. So you just get out two guys and play him for one white mana. You get a 12-12 flyer that's very hard to deal with. So that's the five drops. Then for the spells, got the matchsticks that I already showed. Uh, got two absolute cake zone uh, for countering spells when you don't have Glinda out. Uh, if you have Gretel out, lets you draw a card as well. It's really nice. Uh, then we got three tell a fairy tale. Uh, that is to get out the Hamlin's Pied Piper uh, for just three mana. Come out. Turn three, you could do tell a fairy tale plus matchstick to have a 10 10 coming out. Uh, swiftness, first strike, really strong. Uh, and then got one bonsai attack. Uh, gives all of your resonators plus seven and pierce. Uh, but they all die at the end of the turn. Uh, if you have a lot of resonators out and your opponent is tapped out of mana, you can just win the game by giving five, six resonators plus seven to go for total 4,200 at least. And if they have blockers, the pierce can end up getting the damage in either way. So that's the 40 cards in the deck. Uh, for the stone lineup, got three windstones, got three gusting skies, and four blasting waves. The reason for not four gusting skies and two windstone is because of split heaven and earth. Uh, you ramp a lot with the deck, so you're getting up to six, seven stones very often, and part of that is because the deck kind of needs it. 
So by having three windstones, you'll be taking on average less damage from split heaven and earth each game, and 300 damage can make the difference between losing or winning. Four blasting waves is necessary because you need it for bonsai attack and for magic matchstick. Uh, other than that, it's about it for the stones. Pretty self-explanatory for the most part. Uh, and then for the side deck, uh, got two Machina, uh, I mean uh, Maribel, the Steel Ball. Uh, helps get rid of Regalia, like change the world that make Reflect decks kind of a problem. Uh, also, you get a lot of mana in play, so it can be a 10-10 very easily uh, by just paying 5 mana. Uh, so it's very nice to have in the sideboard. Um, two more Regalia, playing two Death Scythe for aggressive Bahamut decks or Kane decks, uh, or Valentina 2.0 gets rid of Imperishable and Swiftness, uh, which is very nice. If they do kill it, you're discarding a lot of Resonators, so it's very easy to just get it back by removing three from the discard. Then we got two Robe of Fire Rat. Helps against aggressive red decks, which are very popular in the metagame. Taking care of Lancelots, uh, Kafugas with Ame no Habakiris, Suzunoos especially, when you have Wyber out, Suzuno can be a problem. Uh, it does a lot of work. I don't think it's worth it in the main board, but sideboard, I think it's an absolute staple for anything that's running red mana. Uh, got one Grim Avenger of Fairy Tales. This is something that I would like to go up to two. It's very helpful against Cthulhu decks which ended up being a popular tournament I won. This one with this. So this removes a purple resonator from play, which could be something big like Dark Arthur, or Yog Sagath, or Mephistopheles. All really big threats that it's hard to deal with them without Grim. And you can search it out just by discarding a Fairy tale you don't need, like Gretel in the late game, or Glinda. It's just another fairy tale you can search out. Got another Glinda in the sideboard. Um, I would probably cut this for another Grim, but it helps against Split. It can also end games by giving Rapunzel uh, unblockable. There's not much more to say about her though. Got two Susan Oo, the Ten Fist Sword. Helps against other decks that have Glyber in them. Also, you do get to 6 mana very easily, so a 12-12 Pierce Swiftness that's probably killing something when it comes into play. Pretty nice to have. You can't search for it, that's why I don't have it in the main deck, but be putting 2 in the main deck, game 2 or game 3. Uh, is nice because you'll probably draw into it. Um, got two Flame King Shout. This is for Alice World decks that require a lot of resonators in play to finish their strategy. Uh, killing all of them for three mana is nice. Uh, there's not really many three drop uh, red resonators to put in play. Uh, you often don't want to put matchstick girl into play without using her awakening abilities, but the board wiping is pretty necessary in a sideboard. Uh, then got some one ofs Got a, another bonsai attack in the sideboard if I feel it's necessary in the matchup to have all of my guys swinging. My opponent doesn't have any board wipes. And Bonsai can be very powerful with the second copy in the deck. Got one Guild Arai. This didn't do any work uh, in the tournament. I won with this. Uh, I didn't put it in a single time. The idea is 
you get to a lot of stone, so you'd be able to cast it very easily. But it just, it's usually not worth it. Uh, often playing against aggressive decks where you don't want big guys in your deck. Uh, and when you're playing against control decks, they'll just counter it. So he's probably coming out of the sideboard. Uh, then we got Blazer. It's kind of the same thing. However, it's five mana, and if they don't counter it, uh, it's incredibly powerful. Uh, before Twilight Wanderer came out, uh, I put in a lot of work in my Grim deck. Uh, but really solid card. It's just not worth it in the sideboard right now, though. There are more important things. Uh, but that concludes this deck profile. Um, I think Matchstick Grim, really good deck. And I'll probably be playing it for the AGP next week. So, hope you like it.